Welcome, Buddy Doherty. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction. Um, this is my first time presenting. I've been working for 16 years, ever since God laid his hand on me in 2003. And this geometry has been working through me like Russell had a 30-day illumina and night illumination. I had a seven-day illumination. And this is what you're about to experience is some of the information that I learned in my 16 years of studying not only Russell, but mainstream cosmology and the electric universe paradigm. Solar biology, how to create structure and life out of sound. Fractals, filaments, and frequencies. Fractals, filaments, and frequencies. So this is kind of a little bit of a brief idea of where we're going with this. We're gonna get into high performance design. The field creates form, morphic resonance, minimal energy configurations, Birkeland currents, the Doherty set, and the Doherty network, spin, chirality, electric universe geometry, plasma morphology, and vortex science and dynamics. Okay, so morphology and high performance design. This is one of a, a, a large inspiration in my life, Peter Pierce. He's an American product designer, author, and inventor, and he was assistant to Bucky, uh, Buckminster Fuller. So a lot of his, uh, his presentation and what he has to do with is form uh, and morphology and form as an agent of performance, shape power. All shape has power. There's, uh, there's shapes to things and the shape has power itself and it gives off energy inward and outward, um, all shapes. Morphology, according to Peter Pierce, is the study of principles governing the shape of things and how the shape of things determines the performance. If you are alive today, you are high performance design. All creatures alive are minimal energy configurations. We are sustainable efficiency. Does the field create the form? What is the field? Is the field sound? Is it meandering rivers, currents, filaments that create our nodal forms? Are we spoken into existence? Does sound create us? First fundamental filament is the binary filament. This is a filament off of the, net, the, uh, the Doherty set. And the binary filament is what zeros and ones are in computers. Uh, and also what, uh, how biological cells and entities unfold, cellular biology. This is the umbilical connected to all is one helical. The code is chiral. It is the spiral source of life and the division of cells. The first shall be the last and the last shall be first. All that is in the universe is included within. This is a product of the fundamental filament. All creatures and all life forms arise out of this dielectric perturbation. This is literally the visual representation of the phys physical construct of materiality out of the void. This is the frequency, the fractal, and the filament of life produced by compression and rarefaction, i.e. expansion and contraction, being that it is a minimal energy configuration and because nothing touches, the filament is produced itself. Now, I have a golden mean caliper and I have my drawings in the back here. And if you want to take a little gander, take it for a walk. And we can talk about a lot of discoveries that I have come up with having to do with golden slides and how the rotation of these filamentary networks are completely golden. And everything is based off of the golden mean. This is a golden caliper. So these are the oil, this is the golden oil uh, that, that is pumped systolically, meaning both ways, through the filamentary network. It produce, it's based off of the uh, square root of two, as you can see here, and it is uh, one off. This is the first filament. It goes infinitely inward, and each one of these nest infinitely inward inside of each other. These are Birkeland currents. 
high performance design. And the Doherty set highlighted here is the ninth gate or the ninth network. It is, it produces the red shape seen here. I found this and I seen this shape. I text my, my friend who's our military, he's a pilot. And I'm like, what plane has that shape? And he sent me this. And so you can see the, the structure of things inside of the network also produces the beings and the forms inside of the network. You have stingray here, a swallow, and it gets deeper into the geometry down here. This is uh, Lockheed Martin's RQ-170 Sentinel, and it's American unmanned drone. Minimal energy configurations and patterns of least resistance. In nature, form is determined by intrinsic first principles that come in the shape of things. In nature, all form can be considered a diagram of forces in which patterns of least energy prevail. We are minimal energy configurations. We are patterns of least resistance. If we are living, if anything is living, you are the sun reflected and condensed down into a plasmoid. If, uh, I'll get into that later. The Doherty set uses form as a diagram for the fundamental forces by seeing the forms that are, that are found and proliferated throughout the set. We can find out more about fundamental forces and space-time electroplasma geometry. Sound, frequency, and vibration. Take a look at these real insects over the vortexture of the Doherty network. It gets me thinking that maybe Rupert Sheldrake is correct in his theories of morphic resonance. Not a new idea. Hindus believe that the sound um, is the embodiment of the universal essence. The or original sound of the universe thought to originate from the Hindus or Dharma and the Vedic tradition. Ancient India's great literature touts Om um, as the symbol that represents the nature of the universe. And I could be mispronouncing it because as far as I know, it's Mm. as a hug. Um. All right. So according to Christians, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis. Um, we've heard of principles like this. I think of sound as living. To me, sound is alive. You speak life or you can speak death into anything. How does sound, something that is so ethereal, become something so real and something so tangible? How does this umbilical attachment to all of this life filament from the sun. To understand more, we have to look into morphic resonance, first principle geometries, and unit cell, unit cell and self-organization. This is a photo of plankton and the Doherty network. Morphic resonance. Sheldrake's morphic resonance posits that memory is inherent in nature and that natural systems inherit a collective memory from all previous things of their kind. Sheldrake proposes that it is also responsible for telepathy type interconnections between organisms. The morphic field. A morphic field is an energy-like field that defines the entire biology of all living things. The idea was first put forth by a scientist named Sheldrake, which is false. Actually, I, I guess the, the theory was put forth, forth by Sheldrake, but it was really an idea earlier proposed by um, uh, mycologists. Mycologists came up with the idea because they were, and Sheldrake says this too, because they were trying to figure out how they, the fungus spontaneously erupted um, at, at once. It was like there was a memory field or something for them to come up. So it was provided a force that guided the development of an organism as it grew making it take on a form similar to other species. And we see morphology in all of design, and it's basically mimicry on all scales. There's a mirroring that Russell puts forth as well at talking about how speciation is mirroring on all scales. If morphic resonance exists, what does it look like? Morphic field as filaments. Are all creatures a product of wrapped up bundles of filaments or fiber bundles like gauge theory is leading us to believe? Is this what morphic field is? Is there propagation or delineation patterns from the sun constantly informing all creatures, including our gut microbiome and structure? The answer is yes. 
We'll get into that a little bit later about the microbiome and instantaneous communication with the, the, the sun and, uh, and solar flares. If all creatures are dependent on all other creatures in the solar cycle, perhaps all creatures are nested into concentric tube-like filaments inducing perturbations from source energy. Information in the field is perpetually sustaining every creature as a minimal energy configuration of high performance design. The Doherty set as the morphic resonance matrix or grid. You can see here, and you can also see in the uh, presentation that the forms are literally created out of the field. And every single one of the forms of all creatures so far as uh, me and my team and collaboratives uh, have, have worked, we are finding that the, this field is defining and creating uh, the master grid for the universe of induction. We live in a universe of induction. Everything is induced, all forms are induced. What is a Birkeland current? Birkeland currents are a good place to start in order to understand how the field coming off of the sun morphs into structures like living creatures. The theory that there are huge electric currents powered by solar wind and guided through the ionos ionosphere by Earth's magnetic field was postulated more than a century ago by Norwegian scientist Christian Birkeland. This was before Russell, even though Russell himself has, we'll get into that, shown off how Birkeland, Birkeland currents work. It wasn't until 1970s, that after the advent of satellites, however, that these Birkeland currents were confirmed by direct measurement in space. Christian Birkeland died. He committed suicide because he showed that there were electric currents coming from the sun and all mainstream science said, doesn't exist, bud. And he killed himself. So my hero, literally, not the fact that he killed himself, that sucks that it had to go happen that way. But um, when I found out that what I was working on is Birkeland Currents, I went directly to go talk to um, Professor Donald Scott. Professor Donald Scott's review of the Doherty set, the author of The Electric Sun. Uh, he's a retired electrical engineer and professor, uh, and he is the forefront of, of teaching what Birkeland currents are. What Walter Russell was exposing inside of his geometry is Birkeland currents. I firmly believe that it's part of what he was exposing. This is what Do Donald Scott said after I gave him my work. I have examined, I believe, all the links and YouTube videos you sent me. They are quite impressive because you are clearly able to include the wild complexity of what the interior structure of a Birkeland force-free field aligned current would look like if we were able to get inside one. Nice work. <sighs> I can die a happy man. I literally, that's it. That's the only person I need to talk to. I don't care about anybody else's opinion. Because this gentleman literally did the mathematics of what a Birkeland current is, and that's what I'm about to show you, and what Wal Walter Russell was working with. I see that you are aware of the complex structure that my model says is inside a Birkeland current, but in another sense, the overall property is quite simple. It is a set of concentric spirals whose pitch angle increases smoothly and continuously with radial distance. That was in 2017. The Doherty set as the structure of Birkeland currents. What you're seeing here is Donald Scott's depiction and of a Birkeland current. And what you see here is this is the Earth and this is the magnetosphere and the magnetotail. I'm finding that everything exists inside of this set and it's really fun and cool because there's a lot of work to be done. What is a Birkeland current? A Birkeland current is a set of currents that flow along geomagnetic field lines, connecting the Earth's magnetosphere to the Earth's high latitude ionosphere. The strength of the Birkeland current changes with the activity of the magnetosphere during, sub, during substorms. So the complex self-constricting magnetic field lines and current paths in a Birkeland current uh, may develop in a, per, uh, a plasma. This was all developed by Hans Alfen in 1976. The Doherty set is emergent first principle space-time geometries. Birkeland currents and all things using 
emergent first principle geometries. The Doherty set lays out fundamental emergent first principle geometry using the inverse square cube law slash cube law. All light, electromagnetism, gravity, and sound waves function using the inverse square law. The entire vortical coordinate system is constructed using spherical propagations. The isotropic vector matrix, the cubic lattice that of the isotropic vector matrix is what Bucky Minster, Buckminster Fuller was working with and uh, what a lot of Nassim Harriman has been uh, based off of his movement. That's what the Doherty sets, uh, the inner structure of it is, uh, is the, the isotropic vector matrix, the cube lattice of Walter Russell, the flower of life, and the fruit of life are all parts of the core structure of what it is. The Doherty set is a dynamic logarithmic scale invariant projective geometry. Self-organization of solar wind into harmonic coaxial nested Birkeland current filaments. Coaxial filaments are just like the way we do it in uh, electrical engineering or electrical, uh, any wires and wiring is coaxial. That's the most efficient way that we have come up with so far to, uh, to, to work wires. And that's how the universe does it too. Similarly, there's more efficient ways, but we're, we're working on it. The Doherty set shows geometry of how the separation of double layer plasmas form in harmonic intervals. It all has to do with harmonic intervals. Everything has to do with harmonic intervals. They can't nest unless it's harmonic intervals. This is just one. This is just the first filament off. When you get into the other filaments, you start to see the progression of animals and why animals are created in sexed pairs and mated sexed pairs of uh, opposites. So basically the gist of that is, is a Birkeland current is a force-free field-aligned filament. That's the name of it. And it's also a Gaussian Bessel minimal energy configuration or Gaussian Bessel, Bessel filament if you want to look this stuff up and get deeper into some of the research. And they like, like you see here, Yes, there's ropes that come off of Saturn, and that dust hits us, and everything has tailspin. And all of these currents are moving around, and that's why we're in Mercury retrograde, and that ish happens. Infinite helical geometric progressive filaments. The entire system of the Doherty set is locked in phase conjugation, meaning it is perfect compression of golden mean ratio scaling, like Dan Winter points out. The Doherty set is a living dynamic geometry that allows life and soulment within variable size containers we call bodies. Life moves through all these containers and these containments seamlessly. The Doherty set could be the scalable living geometry of dynamic systems. What's more is TDS matches the three-quarter scaling law of metabolic rate of growth in living systems and sustainability in networks. That right there is from Jeffrey West. Jeffrey West's work, he wrote a book called Scale. The book is amazing. Scale is, is it's, um, I love it. Anyway, so it's all tube dynamics of cobordisms. In mathematics, cobordisms are tubes. That's it. So the whole thing here is what we're looking at is tubes. Another word for this is diffusion limit aggregation. I'll show some slides here later that DLA is the same uh, branching flow system that we call Lichtenberg patterns that we see in the, the lightning or that we see in rivers or um, that kind of thing. These patterns invariably come out during pressure and the release of pressure in any system. So compression and rarefaction, or pressure and the release of pressure, as, or what Walter re refers to as heat and cold um, also, uh, produces these patterns of, uh, of, and they're called Lichtenberg figures. Lichtenberg figures, this is the geometry of them. They're, they're, they're double helical. All lightning is double helical, and it has a double helical leader, and it's being pushed by this double helix. So a, a lot of people think that water is lightning or electricity. And there's a lot of theories going around that electricity is light, lightning or electricity is water. 
So when you start thinking of this kind of stuff, it makes a lot of sense. Russell and Birkeland currents. Duh. The man knew what he was talking about. And you, you can see it here nested inside of the Doherty set. And uh, you can also see it here. The, it, it's perfect nesting with these uh, where the pine cones kiss noses, as Dan Winter says. And this is phase conjugation. This is what phase conjugate systems are. So it's infinite heterodyning phase conjugate systems into um, eternal wells of Feigenbaum constants, which is a lot of big words. But the Feigenbaum constant is just an infinite bifurcation. And then it opens up to windows of order. And I, I unfortunately did not get to add that in, so I have to say it. Don Scott and Walter Russell in the Doherty network. This right here, when Don Scott was giving his presentation that I saw from like 2015 or something, it's the only time I've ever been on a plane. Um, I, I went to go see Donald Scott. And uh, this was his, his model of a Birkeland current. What's happening here is, is this is energy, this is plasma, which is uh, electricity in it's in a charged state, uh, electricity and, and all of the information coming from the sun. And inside of these charged sheaths, these long sheaths um, that, that are created that I've shown here as filaments, fractals, filaments, and frequencies. So you have counter-rotating, you have concentric circles, you have a counter-rotating, counter-rotation going on inside of each one of the uh, the tube toruses. Russell shows the, the same similar geometry. This is just one of his uh, geometries that show the concentric nesting. Magnetohydrodynamics. The word for my magnetohydrodynamics is derived from magneto, meaning magnetic field, hydro, meaning water, and dynamics, meaning movement. The field of MHD was initiated by Hans Alfian for which he received the Nobel Prize in 1970. This is all about plasma physics. All of electricity that has been harnessed has been because of the plasma physicists, that the forerunners that led to people who actually harnessed it out of the tubes of plasma. We were trying and trying and trying and trying, and then we figured it out. But it's due to the plasma physicists, and Hans Alfian was the one who started talking about magnetohydrodynamics. And this, what we have here on the left, is the sun. And as you can see, this is an artistic rendition, but nonetheless, it, they are accurate, and there's many of them. I think this one's from NASA. I don't even know. I don't care. Usually, they just draw the stuff or paint it. And then they say that it's a real picture. So uh, this is the Earth right here. This is the Earth. And, that, and every single shell matches perfectly with this set. And the tail and, um, and, and all of it. And that's a plasmoid. Another one, like I showed you before, there's the magneto tail. Mandelbrot in the Doherty network. TDN is the fractal geometry of space time. Magnetohydrodynamics or plasma flow from all beings to all beings in nested filaments or Birkeland currents. Just as the Mandelbrot set is the pattern or mathematics of complex numbers, the Doherty network is high performance advanced propulsion technology, among other things. That's just one of the things that it has potential as dyadics or the two addicts, quaternion symmetry inside of the Doherty network. This is what Walter was working with. These are, these are real mathematical terms and scientific terms and terminology. It took me freaking forever to find this stuff out. Just, I see a guy taking notes. Come on, guys. No, I'm kidding. Take some more notes. No. <laughs> this stuff is important. So uh, the dyadics, dyadics or two addicts, uh, you can see Walter's cube field here, the cubic field. And every wave frequency or vibration can be divided into quaternion symmetry, which is just quartering the, the symmetry. That's what the whole first filament is, is quaternion symmetry. That's what all computers are based off of, is that first filament and our binary networks. So that, that's not even getting onto any more filaments yet. 
this is just the first principle natural geometry producing compression and rarefaction, blah, 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 like I, like I said. But it also produces the constructive and destructive wave interference that we call re reality. What is the Doherty network? A projective geometric model of the electric vortex universe. Walter, I always love, I'm very into the electric universe paradigm, and I always love how people shy away from Russell, and then I just hit it hard, and I'm like, you can't take him out of it. You can't take Russell out of the equation, no matter how deep you want to get your science, because he, he had a lot of principles correct. Uh, so the Doherty set represents foliations of higher dimensional space but it's also, among other things, inner space. The Doherty set is projective dynamic geometry. It is helical and toroidal, phi scaling, implosive, explosive uh, geometry. Using the inverse square and heterodyning phase conjugation, the Doherty set is logarithmic scale invariant. It has promise in electrical engineering, homotopy type theory, integrated information theory, the field with one element, graphene, and a plethora of other interconnected disciplines. The dielectric inertial plane is squeezed out of kissing spheres. That's, that's important. I might get back to that in a, in a minute. But the sequential images are inherent in the Doherty set as the geometry. Fundamental flower of life grid. Durr. Another one of those, well, of course it has to be in there. The Doherty network first principle geometries underlying the grid is a double stacked flower of life matrice or matrix. The flower of life stacked twice and rotated as the 24 elders that is depicted or talked about inside of the New Jerusalem is very interesting. And when you start looking at the dynamics of it, it can teach you quite a bit. It has taught me a lot. The fruit of life is said to be the blueprint of the universe containing the basis for design of molecular structure. It is the geometric basis for the definition of what is known as the Metatron's cube, which brings forth the platonic solids. How do we create structure in living bodies out of sound? What is scaling? Scaling is something that I had the pleasure of finding out by typing in space-time fractal into Google. Uh, like in 2007 or something, 2008. And then I found Hartmut Mueller with the Global Scaling Institute, who was just in prison for a long time, which is what they like to do to people who, do, who find crazy stuff. Russian um, scientist, and this information was disclosed for 20 years until he came out and started talking about it. You'll find inside of Global Scaling and studying um, the modalities of it or the nodes and the network that it's the same thing that the Doherty set ex expresses as well. So what is scaling? Scaling means logarithmic scale invariance. Scaling is a basic quality of fractal structures and processes. The global scaling theory explains why structures and processes of nature are fractal and the cause of logarithmic scale invariance. All of our senses pick up um, nothing but logarith they're, they're, they pick up nothing but spheres. Uh, hitting us, and, and these spheres hitting us, uh, we detect it as a, a logarithmic scale invariance. The reason why we, our senses pick it up as logarithmic scale invariance is because reality is constructed logarithmically scale invariant. Scale in the Mueller fractal in the Doherty network. Triadics in the Doherty set, also seen here, is the Mueller fractal exhibiting gravitational waves in a logarithmic scale invariant manner. Near-death experiences. When you die, you go into possibly the same hole as the center as of the Doherty set or the Doherty network. Everything is hollow. According to what I'm researching, there's, there's nothing that is, uh, uh, there's no such thing as solid. There's no such thing as solid. Solids don't exist. Everything is hollow in the center. There's nothing but zero. Um, biblically, the Bible would also, uh, uh, go along with saying that, behold, I looked in the center of the throne and there was no one sitting on the center of the throne because the God, God and the Lamb are the throne, therefore it's hollow. And that's in Revelation 22 or something, whatever. Um, so these, this is what happens when you, when you have a near-death experience. And this has been collectively uh, shown all throughout the world, people that have had these experiences say that they see a lattice or grid first, 
form into like a cobweb, then it's a tunnel, then it's a spiral. If you look at the Doherty set or Russell's work, sp spiral periodic table of uh, elements, that's where it's at. This right here is form constants and stuff that we see when we're, uh, when we're hallucinating. And form constants are also produced by uh, how the Lichtenberg figure was discovered as an electrical arc inside of dust. So there's form constants that are, are perpetual and they constantly exist. We're a form constant. All animals are a form constant because they're minimal energy configurations. And so I'll continue here. This on the right here is phosphine form constants. I don't even know what phosphine is, but I just put it in there. Form constants. All right, so eigenfunctions of uh, perpetual processing or perceptual processing. Um, we see these things, like, like I was saying, when you press on your eyes or when you are dying, um, I've had a near-death experience myself, wasn't that great, saw some dead people that weren't there. Yeah, so I'll continue. Examples of the geometric form. This, this geometric form here, uh, form constants seen in hallucinations. So if you try some DMT or you know you try a little bit of uh, ayahuasca, peyote, whatever you're into, you might see some of these form constants. These form constants are also a fundamental part of the structure of first principle geometries and dynamics. Diffusion limited aggregation. Look at that. How does that how does that make you feel? That's what you are. That's what we are. I mean, like that's we we are. These, we are crystals, and I've heard that all you need is time and, uh, and pressure to form a crystal. But you also need minerals, you know, the mineral that's leading to it. But time and pressure forms crystals, which is why with time and pressure you can build um, anything. You can really build your life. So that's, this is another word for what I've been talking about as Lichtenberg figures. Um, there's, I've always been drawn to this, the, the dendritic arborization type of pattern my whole life. And, and that's why I do this fractal branding. That's why I risk my life to make every piece. I mean, literally, there's people dropping like flies doing this electropyrography because I love these shapes and I want to share it with people. So a lot of stuff branches out like this and it's just because of a um, compression and rarefaction. The filament is fractal and carries frequencies. The supergeometry of the Doherty set is a quasi-crystalline lattice. All the helices seen here, well, on the next one, can be viewed as leading and trailing strings of hop vibrations. The Doherty network is in an infinity sphere. Stereographic projection. My friend here, Harry Seegerman, is a, a world-renowned mathematician, and he has created these stereographic projection sculptures, three-dimensionally 3D printed. In geometry, the stereographic projection is a particular mapping or function that projects a sphere onto a plane. The projection is defined on the entire sphere, except at one point, the projection point, where it is defined, the mapping is smooth and bijective. So he's holding a a flashlight above those spheres that he 3D printed. And that's, uh, I'm gonna talk about Terrence Howard's work a little bit because if you take Terrence Howard's work, hit some of his plasmoids and you shine a flashlight on, uh, if you construct it correctly, you should be able to shine a flashlight on his work and get something similar to the Doherty set or the Doherty network. And what you're getting here is a three-dimensional um, stereographic projection that leads to a two-dimensional surface. So there's a lot of information in the Doherty network and the Doherty set. It's all retained inside of the set as the two-dimensional um, stereographic projection. But inside of his pieces, it loses definition and information because of uh, the, the fact that it is in three dimensions, whereas all the information is retained in the two-dimensional stereographic projection. Thunder and lightning. Perhaps the sound of thunder is new creatures coming into existence and the ingredients to sustain them all in one clap. What I mean by this 
is, well, I guess I'll get into that, but the word brontophonic derives from the Greek word brontos, meaning thunder, which leads us to designate a brontophonic as something that sounds like thunder. So I love that word and I'd love it to share it with other people, the sound of thunder, um, why not? As we're moving through the filaments. Now I'm gonna move on to, um, to some examples of the Doherty network. Plasmoid creation. This is where we get out our rubber bands. And I try to explain the universe using the, the analogy of plasmoids. Plasmoids were discovered by Winston Bostick, and I believe he named them. But if you could pull out your rubber band and envision, uh, let's just say your left hand is the sun, OK? So you can take the rubber band here, and I'm going to go deeper into the science of this, and you can twist and twist and twist and twist, and the more you twist, you'll start to get these, these kinks that come out from the side. These kinks that come out from the side are uh, plasmoids. So you can envision some of them as planets and how the, how the energy from the sun is coming to these, these kinks as planets. And as you come together, they'll turn into little rope, little knots. Oh, look, there's a planet. There's a spheroid right there. And that tension, that tensegrity is, is perfectly, as Buckminster Fuller says, with tensegrity, you, you get tension on both sides. So that's what winds and binds and bounds filaments. So Bostic goes on and he, and he talks about these and how this is how uh, magnetic energy generated by the currents flowing from a capacitor. So what he's saying here is, uh, is this, after this slide, I'll get deeper into that. The Doherty network, real numbers and imaginary numbers to be the fundamental helical units of the universe. This is what I propose as the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum, shown as axially aligned filaments along dielectric inertial planes. Notice that the torus is the fundamental nodal construction of all helices. Beams of light, plasma transmission wires, Birkeland currents come to mind. Whilst the Doherty network is most certainly helicoidal, it exposes another dynamic. That is, that the structure is first principle hierarchical nesting found in self-organization and self-assembling systems prevalent in nature, the geometry of morphic resonance. Morphic resonance is self-organization, and it, everything is self-descriptive. Self we are self-descriptive in our, in our nature. The image here is a two-dimensional stereographic projection of the nested higher-dimensional hop vibrations reality is most certainly composed of. The braiding structure occurs on all scales, micro and macro, on through into the macro. The Doherty network is a self-descriptive infinity sphere. So if you want to look into infinity spheres, infinity spheres, or a three sphere, you can look into the geometry of that because that's where this kind of stuff in cobordisms is leading. Eric Lerner's helical vortex filaments and black holes. Okay, so this is where it gets, this is where it starts to get to the point of where your rubber band starts to make sense even more. Um, Eric Lerner is alive. And this is his model of black holes. Now, this is consistent with what just happened here in our own quasar. The illumination that nobody can explain um, it is because the, uh, it was just part of the kink, the kink and the instability that had more charge. Therefore, it was glowing brighter inside of the central bulge of our Milky Way galaxy. Um, uh, a, a gentleman and colleague of ours uh, see the pattern on YouTube, that's his YouTube channel, uh, Gareth. He's, he has done a wonderful job explaining what the, the quasars and black holes are. And you can see that the Doherty set is clearly modeling a similar type of version that's going on here. You have the four-leaf clover where the energy comes out of the side and down the center, down the center, down the center, down the center, in the center. And at the center, you have nothing but hollow. It's whole, holy. Hollow it is, hollow we are, hollow would be thy name. Geometry of the Akasha. 
The Doherty network predicts the his hysteresis of Alphian waves as carriers of information directly from the sun or the solar circuit. Sonobiology declares that it is a binding of these closest packing helicoids there within that creates the duality of sexed mates, duality or dyadics, pertaining to all living creatures. Perhaps all living creatures are condensates that become plasmoids out of these condensed tendrils or filaments. I can't stress enough, the entire thing's fractal. I don't want to keep saying fractal, but it is. Hysteresis loops in the Doherty network. The hysteresis, and I found this out like last week, and I was like, oh my god. And then some of these other discoveries, I discovered so many wonderful things preparing for this speech. I'm so happy to present these to you, to everybody here. The hysteresis loop and magnetic properties of the Doherty network. A great deal of information can be learned about the magnetic properties of material by studying its hysteresis loop. A hysteresis loop shows the relationship between the induced magnetic flux density and the magnetizing force. It is often referred to as a BH loop. The loop is generated by measuring the magnetic flux of the ferromagnetic material while the magnetizing force is changed. So there's the whole entire thing is, is the pulsating two-way living universe that Wa Russell was talking about. And these are the systolic type of inertial um, ingredients. Kink instability in the Doherty network. And that's what we were just playing with. That is a name, a scientific name, and uh, it has to do with the binding and the winding of the, the, the loops that we were playing with. Filaments and networks. It's clear to me that these nesting networks, the geometry of information is the geometry of filament node networks. They are helical. Likewise, all information acts as a perturbation information mind field. Russell was talking about a mind universe. And this is, this is how consciousness can possibly be uh, uh, thought of as moving along these Birkeland currents throughout space. The geometry is also helical and a flow pattern. It's a geometry of implosion and induction. It's also fundamentally helical, leaving us with helical electromagnetism. Helical qualia, which is the, uh, the, the um, antennas inside of our brains, or neural receptors, as life is helical, DNA is helical. Collectively, all of these helices bound and wound together are referred to by Dr. Vladimir Ginsberg as helicoidal or the helicola. One could surmise that consciousness is helical and information transmits instantaneously through helical networks called Birkeland currents. Everything is compression and rarefaction. I repeat, I, I repeat like Russell repeats because the message needs to be repeated so it gets ingrained into my head, your head, so we know what we're talking about. Everything is compression and rarefaction, i.e. pressure and the release of pressure. The Doherty network provides a, a master grid for electromagnetism, exhibiting the intricate details of nested hierarchical Birkeland currents nested on all scales. I colored a picture. This is just another, uh, um, the, the same filament. I keep playing with that same one because I was so interested in it. Plasmoid slash plasma magnetic entities in the Doherty network. The fine structure constant of plasma and plasmoid flows in the Doherty network is self-evident. Plasmoids are pinches and filaments of charge. This occurs in outer space as stellar formations, nebulas, galaxies, black holes. Yes, black holes are plasmoids. They are a Z pinch and a Birkeland current. Filaments or charge are force-free field-aligned Bessel functions. These currents are called Birkeland currents, and I can continue talking about this next. We heard that rhetoric. Plasmoids as ghosts, angels, and demons. The plasma is emitted not as an amorphous blob, but in the form of a torus. Plasmoids are toruses. Every plasmoid is a torus. Every single plasmoid is a torus. It just has a, has a mouth and an anus like you. It has an opening and a closing, and that's what plasmoids are. The word plasmoid can, will be employed as a generic term for all plasma magnetic configurations. 
beetle wings and anti-gravitics. Viktor Grabinikov was a self-proclaimed Russian scientist, naturalist, entomologist, and paranormal researcher best known for his claim to have invented a levitation platform which operated by attaching dead insect body parts to the underside. If anybody knows about the history of this, this is pretty interesting. And it has a lot to do with like my business cards and the whole style of what I'm working with because beetle wings uh, and beetles are a natural configuration that pop out uh, of the set frequently. There's more beetles on the planet. I forget the quote, but yeah, there's a lot of beetle, beetles on the planet, guys. There's a reason for that, because all of the cracks and crevices and cleavage need to be filled, and they're filled with life. And you go in deeper and you get life, and you go out deeper and you get life on all scales. As you can see here, the scale matches the, the bugs, and every single bug, as far as I've mapped, and I continue to map, matches these scales and these ratios. St. Elmo's fire. This is where it starts getting good. St. Elmo's fire is a weather phenomenon in which luminous plasma is created by a corona discharge from a sharp or pointed object in a strong electric magnetic field or electric field in an atmosphere, such as those generated by thunderstorms or created an, uh, by a volcanic eruption. So this has been viewed all, uh, by a lot of people. This is a real phenomena, St. Elmo's fire. Uh, and, and it happens at the, the edges of architecture. They've often been found to be glowing. And uh, so in the electric universe paradigm, and specifically Neil Thompson, uh, a friend and colleague of mine, we're talking about how when the ionosphere is closer to the Earth, that the rocks start glowing and they start singing and they literally scream out like, uh, like writings from around the world has talked about. And, and this is because ch the charge increases um, on the planet when the ionosphere condenses. And these, this St. Elmo's fire can be seen uh, today. It can be seen always. It can be seen all the time at different, well, I guess, at different, in different conditions. But what we were talking about is the, the, the heads of Easter Island were actually glowing because of this. That's why they put them out there. The ionosphere condensing will start producing everything to glow. Trees will glow, sticks will glow. If, uh, if you go and you grab a stick, you could get shocked to death. That's why everybody goes into the earth during these uh, catastrophism type of events. Partially is because of the weather outside and um, quite possibly because the, uh, the plasma dragons were moving around and you could literally see them and that's why they're documented in the um, Asian culture. And we're gonna get into that a little bit and here it is. Architecture, feng shui, and plasma dragons. In Chinese thought, a system of law considered to govern spatial arrangement and orientation in relation to flow of energy is what feng shui is. And whose favorable or unfavorable effects are taken into account when sitting in and designing buildings. So you can clearly see what I was talking about. This is, this is only a burning sulfur. Um, now, if you can imagine charge moving from one rock to another and you have to build your house open so that you're not gonna die, then you start to get into the reason why energy flows through their, uh, their buildings. And that, that was brought up to me by Neil Thompson and part of the group that I'm working with, with the electric view. So here we have plasma dragons are real. The holes are known as dragon gates. And according to Feng Shui, these holes allow dragons to fly from the mountains into the ocean each day, allowing positive energy to flow through the building as a result. They literally cut holes in the fricking buildings for the dragons to move through. This energy is real. There's a new type of fire that was discovered in 2016 at the University of Maryland. And this fire is called a blue whirl. You'll see a blue whirl right here and the geometry of the blue whirl depicted right here in the Doherty network. And this is my sign and signature. This is why I was peer reviewed and published math, uh, mathematically um, at, for Bridges Art um, Organization. And that was 2017. I figured out that there's, there's internal vortices of this blue whirl structure. Uh, 
and that it has to do with the, the, the base of a blue whirl that they found. It's literally a collapsed um, pillar of fire. That's what a blue whirl is. It's a collapsed pillar of fire. It's a plasmoid or a condensate. If you're wondering what space, spheroidal pressure gradients have to do with the filament networks of Birkeland currents and cosmic power lines, look within this image here and understand that there is a recursive self-similar heterodyning blue whirl at the base of every Birkeland current at the top of the planet and all planetoids um, that, that at least have um, atmospheres. So it's made with a pillar of fire. Like I said, um, it's condensed uh, into its a plasmoid. This is really important because shape has power. And I can't stress enough the fact that shape has power because you, if you understand about the spiritual world and Ouija boards and uh, you actually start creating shapes, you're creating energies inside of your rooms and you're creating energies. That's why they're uh, part of the reason why uh, the Native American uh, dream catchers were created. Shape has a lot to do with our life. Electric speciation. Using the idea of emergent universe and the electric universe, the Doherty set works as an interdisciplinary to tie them together with geometric structure and morphogenesis memory or morphic resonance. These rivers are connected throughout the whole universe and sustain all living creatures like water sustains all living creatures on the planet. This was a paint can that I found in the back of the, uh, the vehicle that I was painting in, literally. You can't tell the difference between a satellite view of, of this archipelago down here and this picture. And this is part of something that we call uh, something, uh, part of the work that we're doing called electric geology. You see scale symmetry, you see fractal earth, you see the networks of compression and rarefaction, um, efficient distribution of charge. Lichtenberg, uh, Lichtenbergs are vestiges or a record of pulsating two-way living universe. It is a record of compression and rarefaction. And I'll keep saying that because it is. it is. It is heat becoming cold or cold becoming heat. Squatter man. Squatter man is found all over the world. I was wearing the shirt yesterday and this petroglyph has been found all over the world. Uh, the discovery that objects from the Neolithic or early Bronze Age carry patterns associated with high current Z pinches, which are black holes, provides a possible insight to, into the origin and meaning of these ancient symbols produced by man. This paper directly compares the graphical and uh, radiation data from high current Z pinches to, the, to these patterns. Um, the paper that they're talking about is a paper by uh, Dr. Anthony Peratt. And Dr. Anthony Peratt produces these plasmoids in the lab, and we're finding them all over on rocks, as if people were to see them in the sky when planets go past each other, and big, huge plasma arcs that you can see in the sky, people would see, write them and draw them on the uh, rocks. Why else would they be everywhere? So that's the work of um, Robert Hawthorne, and the Hawthorns are pushing that message of the electric geology pretty hard. Cyclical, cyclical Z-pinch filaments, elasticity in mu muscle memory throughout catastrophe cycles. Do you remember the last cycle before the Earth was destroyed? Do you remember your past lives, past life regression therapy? Are you going through this kind of stuff? You can see that Russell here uh, does very similar images to the way that this uh, that, that these are created with the hourglass type of uh, shape. And it's cyclical. So this could be, this could be the creation of the center of the, the galaxy. Um, and that's what a lot of people in the electric universe paradigm believe. The hop vibration is extremely important in the twister theory. And Twister theory was proposed by Roger Penrose in 1967 as a possible path to the quantum gravity and has evolved into a branch of theoretical and mathematical physics. Penrose proposed that twister space should be the basic arena for physics from which space-time itself should emerge. 
It leads to a powerful set of mathematical tools that have applied to differential and integral geometry, nonlinear differential equations and representation theory, and in physics to relativity and quantum field theory, in particular scattering amplitudes. Now, this blew my mind when I found this last week. This was discovered and drawn by Roger Penrose um, on his theory of twisters and uh, spinors, spinors and twistors. And here we have the Doherty network or the Doherty set, and you can see the similarities and the patterns and of how they acoust is the word that I like to use from a propagation source. There's a, a hop vibration. If you're familiar with a, what a hop vibration is, a hop vibration is what some people are saying the most important shape in the universe. And this was recently discussed on Joe Rogan, if you care. But I'm glad that some of this stuff is going mainstream. First principle geometries of magno, magnetohydrodynamics, plasmoids, and hyperdimensional hyperbolic physics of the vortex geometry here. So you have projective geometry, which is geometry that projects a shape and moves and shows dynamism. Um, you have the blue whirl shape right here, and it, that's how it's nested. It's nested inside of that uh, filamental structure. You have wavelets. Wavelets are here and here, and they are what, how waves actually compress into literal waves and the harmonics of wave nesting inside of the structure. You have uh, a two-way vortex of Russell. This is the, uh, the two-way vortex right here, moving down, moving inward, and moving upward. And the way that they nest is, it, this is probably one of my favorite things that Russell had uh, when I read Russell, was the fact of these two-way uh, two opposing spiral vortices. And you'll see that they're, they're, they're all based off of phi. Every single one of them is, is nested inside of uh, the golden mean. So these are, for lack of a better term, plasmoids. And they are all tube toruses that have been um, deformed, diffeomorphisms uh, of plasmoids. And they're all inherent in the structure. It's implosive, explosive, geometric progression, and arithmetic progression, which is the most important part. Now, Dan Winter says the golden ratio is the solution to geometric and arithmetic progression. That means a lot. That means everything as far as how life is created out of the inverse square law and how uh, solar filaments are nested into pairs. What I have here is the grid. This is literally the algorithm of the Doherty network and the Doherty set. And I have over here the first, what is it? One, two, three. I have the first five over here because the first one nests into the second one. Now, what happens here when you get down to 108, you get down to the Earth and you get down to the magnetosphere and why, where the magnetosphere is uh, and, and why it takes on the shape that it is. All it is is geometric progression. The entire thing is just geometric progression from uh, a amount of distance from source. Distance from source. So as it moves from distance from sources here, it creates a tighter filamentary structure. And the tighter it is, that's compression. And the rarefaction is the looser it is. <sighs> breathing in, <sighs> breathing out. But, but you, can, you can literally see, once you get down, the, there's some crazy stuff that's going on with, these, with this uh, number set, which I discovered and I call the Doherty network. And I've been looking and talking with lots of mathematicians. And so far, we don't, I'd, I haven't found anything like it. Um, the important part is the golden ratio. The golden ratio is what ties the entire thing together. Inside of my, uh, my, my presentation or the, the, the art show over there that I have, you'll see that, that I have equations throughout all of the um, geometry 
but you can only see them with a the black light. They're in an invisible ink. And you can measure them with the golden mean caliper that I have here. And um, I think that's, that's, that's a main point that hits home. So hop vibration. Hop vibration in the Doherty network as a vertical coordinate system. The Doherty network is literally the graphical representation of a forest, system, or network of infinitely scalable harmonic nested hop vibrations. The hop vibration was that shape that you saw, but they move and they nest inside of each other. And that's what um, the, the twister that we were showing too moves and nests inside of each other. And that's, what the, that's why those shapes of those mushroom cloud-like type of things uh, are there because of uh, that type of dynamic. The cascade also produces con constructive and destructive wave interference, i.e. reality. The dynamism in the Doherty network produces the behavior or perturbations we see in the ether that we call light. Perhaps the dynamism is the perturbations of the hop vibrations moving in the network or undulating. In the mathematical field of differential typology, the hop vibration describes a three sphere in terms of circles and ordinary spheres. So this is what a hop vibration is. Discovered by Heinz Hopf in 1931. And an example of it is fiber bundles. If you don't know how important these are, you soon will. Check it out here, there's the link. Um, a dude's making a big deal about it on Joe Rogan, whether that's here nor there. The Doherty network is a vertical coordinate system, like I said, an axially aligned, nested, cylindrically collimated, counter-rotating Gaussian Bessel filament. Being the actual geometry of a Birkeland current, the Doherty network displays infinite toroidal wells of two-way systolic Feigenbaum constants, which is just the bifurcations that I was talking about that leads to order out of chaos, ordo ab chao, if you want to look into it. Dimension and magnitude within the hop vibrations. All dimension is, is one hop out. You have one dimension nested, then you have another dimension nested, then you have the other dimension nested. That's all dimension is. That's, it's super simple. And, and that's all magnitude is. That's everything that you want to know about magnitude and dimensions is this, and they have to harmonically nest inside of each other. There's no other way that they can nest. It's all quaternion symmetry. Infinite quaternion symmetry is, is in the helical filaments displayed in the Doherty network. The Doherty network and the geometry of a sonic boom. You can see down here at the bottom, there is a stopped plane. There is a subsonic plane, speed of sound, and supersonic. You can see that geometry is progressive geometry. That's geometric progression. That's what creates a sonic boom, and that's the geometry of the boom. Maybe even the womb. Maybe even this room. I don't know. But anyway, hydrogen. Boom, there it is, right in the Doherty network. Oh, of course it nests perfect. There it is again. More pictures of hydrogen. Of course it nests right in the Doherty set. Uh, more hydrogen. So you can see, you can see where I'm kind of getting at. You can see right here the fruit of life, the basic um, pattern of the fruit of life. Then fruit of life nested in the fruit of life. Then fruit of life nested in the fruit of life. And that's what creates everything. And that's why sacred geometry, people are talking about it so sacred because when you create it, you literally go in and it takes you, it overtakes you. But you don't know that until you start dealing with it. It teaches you everything you need to know. Diocatron instability on the North Pole of Saturn. A diocatron instability is what we see here at the bottom. It forms these petals. I'm going to go to a couple other pictures after this, but you'll get more of a, um, an idea of how they form. And it, it, it's, it's a plasma instability as well. This, this pattern happens at the top, the top of Saturn, uh, Saturn's North Pole. And it is a form constant. It's a form constant that, that uh, continually, perpetually forms itself. 
And this is, this is how we knew that, the, that it's a Birkeland current at the top of the, the poles of Saturn, because you have, uh, you have counter rotation observable in the, in the, uh, the top of the, the planet. And here you have the geometry of, of the Doherty set explaining it, uh, the diocatron instability. That's the diocatron instability and how this is a plasmoid or a plasma um, uh, like uh, tube torus blown out. And then it rapidly decays into six, uh, most of the time six uh, little eddies. These little eddies match up with the geometry, plus the little eddies are also um, explaining the diocatron instability that's possibly happening at the top of uh, Saturn's North Pole. Saturn created using, vor using vortices. Saturn here creating using a set of uh, vortexes. Um, and Terence is working on the same work uh, with a colleague uh, Chris of ours and uh, David Johnson, Chris Monk, silly. Uh, this right here is that form, remember, that we were talking about uh, of the, the spinor? That's the same thing. So you have the geometry, once again, um, inside of the central filament. Cladney figures. You've seen Cladney figures. Um, Cladney figures inside of the Doherty network inside of the Doherty set, they match up. There's resonance and there's, there's lines and ley lines of resonance where uh, the filaments naturally uh, node up to. There's natural nodal filaments. Electrons of helium interacting with, within the Doherty network. Uh, this is a photoionization or microscopy uh, technique that the term developed in 2002. This is the first picture that we have of uh, a helium atom um, by the international team of uh, researchers. So everything works and fits inside the set, as you would assume. Sound bubbles and wave model, uh, a lot of verbiage from Jason Verbelli. If you guys are familiar with uh, the real verbs on YouTube, he, uh, he really nails it. And you can see he shows here, uh, he wrote a paper also based off of this, but the, the sound bubble wave model it also expands using the inverse square law. Bipolar outflow, you see uh, nebulas throughout the whole universe um, depicting the same type of uh, set, um, a universal scale set. You got 4D spiral space time. Once you start adding uh, uh, the toroid to it and the work of Vladimir B. Ginsburg, then you start getting into what's really happening. Vladimir B. Ginsburg and the helix based structure. Um, once, like I said, you get into Vladimir B. Ginsburg, then you really start to figure out what's going on. But it's extremely math heavy. His latest book is, is math heavy, but a lot of his other stuff is good um, and teaches you how um, Maxwell and a lot of the other physicists believed that uh, there was a, a vortex nature to the universe. Their theories were based off of it. The Butterfly Nebula. In the Doherty network, you have the um, concentric collimated uh, charge moving out along cylinders, cylindrical charge. Uh, and you also have the uh, bipolar uh, flow. Diatoms in the Doherty network, these are uh, tiny little uh, creatures that come out of the, the glaciers. They are plankton and uh, diatoms are like the main meal for most of the ocean creatures. And they're, they're uh, glass based, they're silicon, silicate based uh, shells that they make themselves. And they literally somehow come out of the bottom of the glaciers and then they end up as uh, the fossil and dust of the Sahara. And then they go up into the, the atmosphere and they seed the Amazon. Somatics and the Doherty network. You can see, of course, somatics match perfect. Every single one that I've put on there um, follows along with the vortices and the way that the structure works. Simoglyphs, fractal filament frequencies, spinors, as you can see, Leonikia supercluster, Milky Way, 
probably working in some sort of filament type of network, as you can see it is, but what, what's the great attractor is the question. Sprites inside of the Doherty network, you can see that layers, um, the charge creates different patterns as it moves through the layers of the atmosphere. Blue whirl, the opposed spiral vortices of that. Universal spherical pressure gradient, that's how the um, Eric Lerner's model of the, uh, the quasars and the black holes are formed because of these spicules, these helical spicules, and there's every single size of them, so therefore there's every size of black holes, that's why. Markland convection within filaments. Markland convection, it shows that, that um, matter is ionized and held to every single shell um, you'll have hydrogen here, you'll have a heavier element here, a heavier element here. Markland convection has already shown and proved that, that uh, matter and materials moving through space and Birkeland currents ionize on these shields, uh, these sheaths. They're called double layers inside of the electric universe and what we're talking about. Stellarator geometry in the Doherty network, you can see that we're already working towards uh, uh, the advanced physics inside of many different departments in the world, uh, somehow the Stellarator actually worked and turned on inside of Germany. I don't know if you guys have been following that one, but it's like really clunky and nobody thought it was going to work and it's working. Um, but yeah, you have this helicity and helical type of confinement. Open gate, there's open gates and ways to get inside, um, inside the filaments and through, uh, in and out. Like a, like just like the form constants of seeing it, seeing it, and uh, when you're dying, going into the tunnel. Heretical infinite geometry. Uh, Giordano Bruno uh, w was working with this geometry and was killed for it back in the day. He was burned at the stake for saying that the universe is infinite. Now we're here in 2019, working with a a power team and Terence Howard. We have a sculpture here that Terence taught me personally to uh, uh, how to create. And I'm very grateful for, uh, for being able to apprentice underneath uh, Terrence. He's a, he's a wonderful uh, geometer and sculptor, artist. Cardiogenesis is helical. This is, this is how the heart forms. All hearts form in this manner of these two, um, these two primitive heart tubes that form together. Um, I'd get into it deeper, but I think you get the gist of it. It's everything's starting to form with these filaments that push together to create life. Universe is helical. Boom. Filaments 2 and 32. Um, filaments 2 and 32 nest perfectly. This is just one example of the, the filaments nesting. Uh, there's an infinite amount of arrays of the filaments nesting. That's what creates interference patterns. Interference patterns is what creates reality. 2 and 32 again. Obviously, I had a lot to say about that. Birkeland condom, or reverse Birkeland currents, and us using uh, buildings and infrastructure as, uh, as antenna for collecting energy from space. Um, we know Birkeland currents exist. Can we tap into them, and are we already building buildings that are doing that? Crystal fractal lattice of light. I think it says enough. I mean, it's, it's refraction. It's what light lasers are just now ter uh, finding that light is doing already inside of its um, configuration. Uh, another pretty picture of world time -wise slice of going into the current and slicing it and being able to see it. The Doherty network as a helical spine or Kundalini and geometry, um, I think that's self-descriptive. You can see the spine is built off of the spheres as well as Russell was showing. Primer fields. If you've studied the primer fields, the primer field geometry is right here on all scalable modalities and every single uh, level, inward and outward of every single uh, uh, ligament coming off of the center. That's really, really important if you know about that. Beam forming using the Doherty network. Everything is about beam forming. You can, this is what technology is. Technology is beam forming. So you use the waves and the wave interference and, you, and literally the dolphins are create uh, three-dimensional pictures uh, of, of beings with sound. Simoglyphs. Sung dog geometry. Um, just wrapping it up here, a couple more. 
uh, Sundog Geometry, and the Doherty Network. We always wondered what Sundog Geometry is. If you know what a Sundog is, you see outside, sometimes the sun does that. You got the, uh, the flutes, you got the vortices, and the reason why they exist. Am I done? Yes! Okay, so at the very end, to conclude, what I want to talk about is uh, the electric future and how um, uh, ultimately electric futurism and electric futurists and what we're already doing in an electric universe to continue to proliferate uh, uh, the idea and going into the filaments. Everything is nearing more towards um, an, an electric future. We live in an electric universe. Let's tap it. Let's harness this energy and let's make this our future. Working with uh, the Russells and trying to continue with the message here. Thank you.